Roger Waters, tell us a little bit about what you feel is happening to the people of Palestine and why we should care about it. Well, what's happening to the people of Palestine is the same thing that's been happening to them since 1948. Um, they are being slowly but surely driven from their land and from their homes and from their lives and from their culture. So they, they so the Israelis are, are, are trying to make them disappear so that they can have Eretz Israel and it'll be certainly the whole of, of what was called Palestine during the British mandate and probably Jordan as well if they get their way. So that's what's happening to them. Today is the International Day in Solidarity with the People of Palestine. Um, it's a complicated period. Um, the Israeli government has designated six prominent Palestinian human rights groups, um, including the Union of Palestinian Women's Committees, as terrorist organizations. Um, how does one even react on a day like this, on the International Day of Solidarity, to something like this, where you know groups of sincere people are being named terrorists by the Israeli government? Well, certainly not with surprise, because it's exactly what we expect from them. Uh, their attacks on anybody who tries to redress the balance in terms of human rights or the freedom of the indigenous people or anything else uh, is met with, with this kind of nonsense. Um, what was I saying? My reaction was I started posting tweets that went, hey, Israel, leave the six alone, quoting my own song from 1978 or 79 or whenever. So, so the response to it has to be loud, it has to be vigorous, and it has to be united, and it is. People are flabbergasted and disgusted in equal measure by these pronouncements. Obviously, none of these organizations have anything to do with terror or terrorizing people in order to achieve a political end. There is a lot of terrorism, but it almost always comes from the Israeli side of the argument. It is certainly an act of terrorism to drop a 2000 ton bomb on somebody's apartment building or family home. You know, so I've I, it's interesting that this is the 29th of November. In 2012, I spoke at the UN on that day, and I'm really glad that I did. It's probably the last time I ever put on a suit and tie, you know, because I wanted their excellencies to take me seriously. And I spent a long time uh, working on the speech that I made that day. But that, that's, that's what, nine years ago now? So nine years have passed, and a lot has changed. It is much harder today for the Israelis to get away with this nonsense of calling, you know, great, wonderful uh, human rights organizations working for the, for the benefit of human beings, whether, whether they're Palestinian or Israeli or English or American or anywhere. It's much harder for them to smear such organizations and such people than it was in 2012. So we are making progress. So good for you, everybody who's fighting back against this. You are winning this conversation because you are right and they are wrong. And that is extremely important in my view. Well, that's true. But I also want you to help me a little bit because um, this year the focus is on palestinian women and girls and one of the things we find is that um, the israelis have made education for boys and girls in the occupied territories in gaza very compromised bombing gaza routinely denying assistance of material into gaza um, in the occupied territories seizing land bulldozing houses and so on um, do you have a message for the young girls of Palestine um, and how, you know, we should extend our solidarity to them? Well, it's interesting that you should sing single them out. Obviously, the, the particular organization that you're talking about has now completely understand the idea of feminism in any uh, society around the world, because by and large, 
societies in the last few hundred years have moved towards patriarchy. And it's very often that women, women and girls get a very raw deal, not just in terms of mutilation of their bodies and, and lack of education and so on and so forth. So I, I'm t- completely behind them. Um, but yeah, yeah, to, bulldozing schools is wrong. Obviously, you know, and so and tonight to deny um, our our children, whether they're boys or girls, but particularly girls, because they get denied an education more readily than boys do. Uh, dare I say, in the Middle East in general, there's a, there's a certain reticence about the idea that girls should be educated, which is obviously completely wrong, inhuman, and goes against any uh, progressive. Uh, notions that any of us human beings might have about the way society may develop in the future. Funnily enough, it was not always thus. Many ancient civilizations were actually matriarchal and probably worked better had for the benefit of that. So there wasn't quite so much testosterone involved in the making of decisions and so on and so forth. Does that make any sense? Uh, you it makes know, a lot of sense. I mean, you know, we're talking about. Um, civilizations which uh, used to have at least the opportunity given for boys, girls, uh, young adults to grow, to develop themselves and so on. Very hard to grow under occupation, very hard to grow when the sound of a bulldozer is coming towards your school. Uh, Very hard to do these basic things. Uh, Today is the day, International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people. You have yourself uh, stood in solidarity with the Palestinians, acted in solidarity with the Palestinians for years, uh, put up with all kinds of attacks and so on. Um, when you say we are winning, uh, give us a few words of encouragement uh, from your long role in fighting uh, you know, against uh, apartheid. Give us some words of encouragement about that feeling that we are winning. Well, you just used the one word of encouragement that we can all gather around, sad as it is, apartheid. Okay, so in in 2012, which is only nine years ago, you could not use the word apartheid in a conversation about Israel and, and Palestine or about Israel and Israeli policy. Well, now you cannot have a conversation that is meaningful in any way without using the word apartheid. And they use it all the time to deny it, just as much as we on the side of human rights do. As I've always said, my platform is tiny. It's the 1948 Paris Declaration of Human Rights and those 30 articles. That is what I believe in. That is what all of those organizations that the Israelis are trying to accuse of being terrorist organized. That's what they believe in, all of them. That is their platform. I stand on the same platform they do. The Israeli government and most of the Israeli people, maybe 90%, don't believe in that platform. They don't give a shit about human rights. In fact, they were, they were rather the whole question about human rights didn't exist at all because that is not the world emotionally, philosophically that they live in, politically that they live in. Well, we do. And it's a world that we, the peoples of the nations of this tiny planet, want to see develop in the future. Otherwise, we may lose this planet, lose this place that we live on. Unless these uh, philosophical notions are generally accepted by our leaders as well as us. I I saw you berating them all at at CO26 or whatever it was in Glasgow the other week. And good on you. Telling them what monsters they are. That, you know, Boris Johnson and the other kind of world leaders who had to listen to what you say. You were on a public forum and and what you said made complete sense. It is harder and harder and harder for them to deny it, you know. So I'll stop rambling because I am rambling. But that the only thing I can say is that things are changing very rapidly. It may feel like the TikTok is going very slowly, but it's not. The check the way people's minds are becoming more. Um, adept at accepting simple truths like the ones that you and I are exchanging one to another in this conversation today, the more chance we have of changing things. 
in the Middle East and all over the rest of the world. But we have to make a lot of noise and we have to stand together. I've seen odd sectarian things happening in this movement that really worry me. Oh, you can support me, but you mustn't support these people who are also working for Palestine because they're communists. Somebody who we both know very well said that to me last week. I'm not naming any names, but I will be speaking to this person later and saying, Oi, how dare you accuse our brothers in this fight or some of them of being communists and in consequence, we shouldn't sign their petitions or we shouldn't. You sound like Joe McCarthy. What's wrong with communism anyway? Oh, well, blah, 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 Joe Stalin. No, 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 no. The basic idea of communism is politically sound, and it's soundly a humane idea. <laughs> you know, well, we all know what it is. Well, they don't. Well, maybe we don't all know what it is because we all haven't read Marx and we don't all understand it. We just think, oh, they're authoritarian and they're this and that. We have to act together. We cannot be looking at our brothers and sisters and turning our noses up because they might be a different religion or a different sect or a different political belief than us. We have to stand together on this platform, human rights. That's all I would say. We have to stand together. That's absolutely true. Thanks a lot. 